Kill Team 21 has been out for a while now, and I have been loving it. It has quickly become my favorite 40k game. It's quick to play, I can easily hop from faction to faction, and it feels like a really accurate 40k battle sim. I have played many games, and every one of them has been a close and nail-biting battle of strategy and dice. I want to get you as excited as I am for Kill Team. In this video, I'm going to take you through every single playable faction in Kill Team 21, talk about what makes them unique, and give you some ideas of what to buy. Hey guys, Jay here, welcome to Eons of Battle. Lately, all of my free time has been spent poring over the Kill Team Compendium as I want to play every single faction in the game. This has resulted in lots of spreadsheets, Google documents, and scribbles on loose leaf pieces of paper, and I figured that this labor of love is worthy of a video. Just in case you are not familiar with Kill Team 21, some important things to know right off the bat is that it is not 40k. In my opinion, that is a good thing. I like 40k, but it's hard to find the time, and it's much easier to get about 10 models ready instead of 50 or 100. Now some important things to know right off the bat, in Kill Team 21, the list building is different from 40k. Instead of spending a number of points, you select models from a list. This is pretty simple, and the Kill Team Compendium lays out exactly what is available for each faction. And the customization for those factions come in three new upgrades called Strategic Ploys, Tactical Ploys, and Equipment. Strategic Ploys lets you spend your command points to get power-ups that last for the entire turn. Tactical Ploys lets you spend your command points to gain powerful one-time use abilities at any point in the game and equipment are things like better grenades, better weapons, stat buffs, unique war gear, and these are chosen right before the game begins and are kept for the entire game. This works out really well in my opinion because you can try out a lot of different things with the same models. Instead of having to hop onto eBay and look for more plasma guns or wishing that an extra heavy bolter came in the box, you can just switch up what stratagems and tactics you're relying on and change up your war gear. Also, this will only cover the Compendium Armies. The unique armies like the Octaris Orc Commandos and Veteran Guardsmen and the Chalnath Tal Pathfinders and Sisters Novitiates are ready to rock right out of the box and are made for Kill Team, but are balanced against the Compendium Armies, so you don't have to worry about getting tabled if you don't want to play Krieg. But getting to the good stuff, let's start with the Adeptus Astartes, aka the Space Marines. Basically, just a ripoff of Starcraft Terran, and most people's starting point in the hobby. Back in Kill Team 2018, a Space Marine team was pretty hard to put together and not very good, but luckily in Kill Team 21, a Space Marine team is very easy to build and is very good. Space Marines have 9 different units to choose from, and I want a bit of everything, but not only will that not fit in a command roster, but it'll also get expensive, so I will focus on the Death Watch Kill Team. 5 awesome customizable models ready to play with one box. But that leaves you with 15 slots available in a command roster, so I would also try and pick up 5 Assault Intercessors off of eBay, which is very doable at the moment because of the flood of Indominus models and the new 40k starter editions at all levels, so they should be very obtainable for the foreseeable future. I think it makes for an excellent kill team. It is what I am playing with now, it gives you a hefty melee punch with the chain swords, and the heavy bolt pistols are awesome at killing things when you get into range. And with stratagems like Bolter Discipline letting you shoot twice and Shock Assault letting you fight twice, you will find that your 3 APL will make you a very killy army. Throw 2 point frag grenades on everyone and you are ready to show everyone why Space Marines only get 5 operatives. That's all they need. Not as flashy as some of the other Astartes kill teams you can put together like Grey Knights or Custodes, but most people probably already have the models to build a Space Marine kill team. And if you don't, I would suggest purchasing a box of Death Watch Marines or 5 Assault Intercessors. And next up, the Grey Knights. The Grey Knights are the all psyker anti-demon, super elite faction of the Astartes, and they stand apart from the normal Space Marines, and the rest of the Imperium thinks that they are either a myth, or don't even know they exist at all. A Grey Knight kill team looks like 5 dudes, a leader called a Justicar, and 4 warriors. And what makes them unique is that they all have access to a unique action, the Psychic Power. For one of your 3 action points a turn, they can either improve their save, improve their weapon damage, or gain the no cover rule on their weapons. All are good, although I think I would always do the better save every single time, because honestly, they don't need the help doing damage. In terms of guns, don't take the heavy weapon. Your Storm Bolters are more than good enough. And let's talk about those Storm Bolters. You get a Storm Bolter, and you get a Storm Bolter. You all get Storm Bolters! 4 attacks, hitting on 3s, re-rolling any and all misses every time for free. That is just cheating. And on top of your Storm Bolters, everyone gets access to a smorgasbord of attractive weapons, which are all good. But I would suggest the Nemesis Falchions. The Double Swords because, guess what they get to do? That's right, reroll any and all misses every time for free. 
Again, cheating. If you want an absolute powerhouse of a Space Marine team, look no further, the Grey Knights came to play. So what's a buy? Easy, a Grey Knight Strike Squad box. Now the box comes with 10 guys, so best case scenario is you make a friend who also wants to play Grey Knights and you go halvesies. That way you get a pretty great kill team for a pretty good price. Next up, Talons of the Emperor, aka Custodes. These guys got smacked in the bum with a nerf bat pretty hard, dropping from 4 APL down to 3, but I think it was for the best. They're still pretty disgustingly powerful. Why play Custodes? 2 up saves, your guns hit on 2s, your swords hit on 2s, and 18 wounds apiece. And because you watch way too much TTS. There are two flavors of Custodes, and they have access to the Sisters of Silence. For your golden boys, the sword and shields are disgusting, giving you a 4 up invulnerable save, and whenever you parry, you remove two defender's dice instead of one, which will almost always leave your opponent defenseless. But your gun is stuck with a 6 inch range, and with such a limited number of models, you need to be able to shoot at whatever you can see. Luckily, the Guardian Spear is also really, really good. I would say that Custodes are the ultimate blunt force instrument for dudes that will not die and will kill whatever they touch. But I wouldn't do that. Four dudes will not give you that new unique flavor. I would bring two golden boys and five sisters. A seven man Astartes kill team is unique. If you want to be double tapping bolters, I would take space marines. And if you want to absolutely crush in melee, I would take grey knights. If I want to play Custodes, I want two absolutely indestructible chads walking up the board flanked by some bolter babes. That's what makes the Custodes special in my opinion. Now on the sisters, do you go flamer or bolter? Now the bolter is a safe choice, but the flamer is really cool. But on a 6 inch range, it's going to mean that you will often miss out on shooting, so bolters are the better choice. Also taking two fire teams of Sisters of Silence would make for a hilarious Custodes kill team with no Custodes. Might be worth looking at. So what to buy? One box of Custodes will totally get you playing, but I would suggest going with a box of Custodes and one box of Prosecutors. Next up, the Adeptus Mechanicus, the lovable robots of Mars. These mechanics, scientists, and engineers also love guns, and they bring lots of wonderful ranged weapons to bear on the foes of the Imperium. The Admech are really unique in the Imperium lineup of teams. If you like good shooting with a shockingly good melee punch, these are your lobotomized buddies. They have four units available to them, the Skitari Rangers and Vanguard, and the Sicarian Infiltrators and Rust Stalkers. The Rangers have good guns and have armor penetration on 6s, but they also have the heavy rule. And having half your team needing to stand still to shoot is suboptimal. Luckily, their helmeted buddies, the Vanguard, are more forgiving. They may only have LAS guns, but they are much better shots than Guardsmen, hitting on 3 ups, and their flashlights rend, so you'll be critting all over the place. Both the troopers have their place, and you can bring tons of sweet heavy weapons. The Plasma Cavalier is brutal. The foot sloggers are fun, but things get absolutely wild when you look at the long-legged weirdos, the Sicarians. They are very similar and are built from the same kit. The gas mask wearing rust stalkers are close combat nightmares who get 5 attacks with amazing weapons and will easily slice and dice almost anything. The heads shaped like disc infiltrators are where things get really interesting. They have good fighting and good shooting. They give up some of their close combat skills for the option to have an amazing pistol or decent rifle. They also have weapons with lethal and stun, which makes for a really cool combination. They are both so amazing, I think it's a coin toss which is better, and the Admech have a couple more things that make them shine. All of their strategic and tactical ploys are great and absolute game changers, and the Mechanicum can get greedy with a super special piece of war gear, the Data Tether. With this little doodad, a model can spend an APL to gain a command point. You just get it, there's no limit. Pop this every turn and let that model be a battery. So what to buy? It's pretty hard because I think it's all gold. One box of Skitari will give you a great 10 man kill team and if you want to add Sikorans you'll have to get a box of those. And if you want to run all Sikorans you got to pick up two boxes but it's pretty tempting. And you know what else is tempting? That's right, our Patreon. If you like the videos we make and you want more, the best way to support us is by becoming a member of our Patreon. Over there you'll gain access to some behind the scenes, voting on what models I paint live here on YouTube, a live hobby hangout every week, some terrain STLs, and more. With that said, it's time for the Sisters of Battle. Next up, the Ecclesiarchy, aka the Sisters of Battle. These are nuns with guns, and boy are they really good nuns with some really good guns. You get twice as many bodies as Space Marines, all with Space Marine saves and Space Marine guns. And if for some reason you don't want that, you can go with giant chainsaws. The Sisters of Battle are a frighteningly survival team of 10 Battle Sisters or 10 Repentia or a 50-50 mix. 
Now, Battle Sisters have access to heavy weapons, in a heavy flamer and a heavy bolter, and I think Sisters might be the only team I would consider taking it. Heavy is an incredibly limiting rule where you cannot move and shoot in the same turn, but you have 10 Sisters, so you can probably let one of them drag around the heavy bolter. And they have a stratagem to turn off heavy, but I would avoid using it. The Sisters have lots of good stratagems, and you're going to want to use them every turn. All you need is a Sister of Battle box. These models are gorgeous, some of the best games Workshop has ever made. That's the obvious choice, but for my money, I went with Rependia. I love melee combat and kill team, and Repentia can absolutely wreck any model they can catch. Also, I would skip Argoflagellants. They're maybe a smidge better than the Repentia, but they can't pick up objectives in an objective-based game, so... skip. Sisters of Battle went from a finicky afterthought in Kill Team 2018 to a really solid pick in Kill Team 21. Woo! Or should I say, ooh woo. I would go with a box of Battle Sisters or a box of Repentia. Next up, the Ostra Militarum, aka the Imperial Guard. Basically, the regular human soldiers. The Guard are one of the most popular factions out there with the most lore, and any Guard player will tell you that Guard has the best memes. Affix Bayonets! Now these are tricky, and you might think because they got the Veteran Guardsmen in the Octaris box that there's no reason to take the Index Fire teams, but I don't think that's true. There is some cool stuff here. If you go with two Guard Fire teams, you get 14 bodies and 5 heavy weapons. Yep, you will have a proper horde running around with a sniper rifle, flamer, melt gun, plasma gun, and grenade launcher sprinkled in for good measure. Guard may be squishy and armed with the often memed upon las gun, but they do get access to orders. Essentially, they get one free strategic ploy a turn. That really helps. It can keep your command points free to use your tactical ploy and bring it down, which helps you re-roll hits and basically guarantees you will take down the target. Another big difference in Compendium Imperial Guard is access to the Tempestus Scions. You get 10 guys whose las guns have transformed into bolters, and if you use your equipment to give all 10 of them Scion blades, all of a sudden they're pretty good in combat too. If you go half and half, 7 Guardsmen and 5 Scions, you can get kinda greedy with the special weapons and take 5 in total. And that is probably what to do. A little bit of everything, all of the time. So what to buy? I would go with a box of Militarum Tempestus Scions, and then a second box of Militarum Tempestus Scions. There's just something magical about the Oops All Scion list. It's very tactical. But there is definitely something to be said for the Cadian Shock Troops as well. Next up, Heretic Astartes, aka the Chaos Space Marines. Let's be honest, the cooler of the Space Marines. If the Adeptus Astartes was an ice cream, it would be vanilla, and Chaos would be mint chocolate chip. With nails. In a bread bowl. With no spoon. Heretic Astartes don't get access to the fancy armor of the Thousand Suns or the toughness of Nurgle, but they do get one more dude, and that can make all the difference in an objective game. Six marines with a smattering of special and heavy weapons, and all of the same abilities that their loyalist cousins get. But they do have some tactical ploys that really show off how mean the Chaos Marines are. Veterans of the Long War is a hilarious ability where if you whiff, no matter if it was a shooting attack or a combat attack, you get to try again. If at first you don't succeed, stab stab again. And Warp Infused might not seem like much, but it can give you one last hurrah. Ignoring penalties to APL, yay, cool, whatever, but you are not injured. Shoot that plasma gun on full blast. Throw that grenade like it's going out of style. Not being injured is awesome. Six Chaos Space Marines is sweet, but they also get access to cultists. If you take a cultist fire team, you drop down to three marines, but I think it's still worth it. They're pretty fragile, but you get eight. All of a sudden, you have 11 bodies on the board. Cultists don't set the world on fire, 7 wounds, bad save, bad gun, but general activation too. So you'll get to activate 2 in a row. Not bad for trying to focus one thing down, or dogpawing on an objective to secure it. And 2 of your cultists can have special weapons. The stubber is good, but 2 flamers running around could be a lot of fun and pack a surprising punch. And the models are so small that with good positioning, you can literally hide a cultist out of line of sight behind your Chaos Space Marines. If you like Space Marines, but you want to cut your fingers open trying to pick up your own models, Chaos is for you. So what to buy? One box of Chaos Space Marines will give you a great one box kill team with every possible option. And then down the line you might want to pick up some cultists. Now Games Workshop doesn't sell the old cultists anymore, but you can still pick up a Cult of the Abyss box, which does come with exactly 8 cultists. But you also might want to look over at Necromunda, I think any of the gangs would make great Chaos Cultists. Next up, the Thousand Suns. Let's get a little chaotic with the Disciples of Zinch. And you're going to notice a trend with Chaos Space Marine where you'll have a small number of souped up Marines and then an army of pleb cultists. A Thousand Suns kill team consists of 5 Rubric Marines or 12 Zangors, or half and half. They are a very interesting faction. 
Rubik Marines stand out in two ways. One, a bizarre rule called All is Dust, where if something shoots at them with strength 3 or less, which is most stuff, they get a 2-up save instead of a 3-up save. Pretty darn good. That's going to make Guard, Orcs, Eldar, Space Marines, basically everything cry as their regular guns just plink off the Thousand Suns armor. Now the second thing that makes the Rubrics special is that their leader, the Aspiring Sorcerer, gets access to Psychic Powers. These give you a lot of options for one APL. He can hand out better bolters, he can give APL to other marines, that's huge. Have fun with your 4 APL dude as he shoots, charges, fights, and picks up an objective. Now the Zangors are pretty much your run of the mill demons, 8 wounds, 5 open vulnerable save, and decently killy in melee. But they do get some surprisingly banging strats for 1 command point. For 1 command point they can be even better in combat, and they have a strategic ploy that most armies would kill for. For one command point, perform mission actions for one less APL. That is super clutch and will win you victory points. Normal move, dash, secure objective. What are you, a space marine? So what to buy? It's pretty easy. One box of rubric marines. That'll give you a bang and kill team and then maybe down the line you want to pick up some Zangors. They seem fun too. Next up, the Death Guard. These guys are dripping with class. Positively oozing charm and covered in pus. These guys may look like they're melting, but they're as tough as all get out. And they are mean green fighting machines. The Death Guard have some pretty great pros and some cons as well. Let's get the bad out of the way first. 4 inch movement. They are slow. It's going to be hard for them to get places, and only 2 bodies and a fire team. Although you do get that 5th marine, the leader, for free. So what are your 5 slow boys going to do? Well, they aren't going to die. Disgustingly Resilient is a rule made for the Plague Boys, which means every time you are dealt damage, you roll a d6, and on a 5 or 6, that wound is ignored. And that is after your 3-up save, so 30% of the time when you get hit, you shrug it off. This makes their 12 wounds feel more like 16. And it is super annoying to your opponent, whose guns are just going to do a little worse than they think. The Fever fellas have access to some fun special weapons like the Blight Launcher and Plague Spewer, but I think I might be more tempted to take lots of bolters, to take advantage of shooting twice with bolt weapons. They are slow, might as well shoot twice. Also a plasma gun is never a bad idea. And remember, overcharged plasma has the gets hot rule, which deals 3 mortal wounds when you roll a 1, but you still get to roll your disgustingly resilient dice on the damage, so overcharge away. Now you can lose 2 of your plague posse and replace them with 8 poxwalkers, and it is definitely tempting, but they are very slow, don't have any guns, and have a 6 up save. They do have Disgustingly Resilient, which helps, but I don't see them doing much for you other than camping objectives. They are perhaps the perfect tar pit units, because they look a little like a tar pit, and if they get into combat with something that doesn't want to be like a guardsman, sister, or tau, their Disgustingly Resilient will make them just that, resilient. The Death Guard are a fun and funky, festering team of foul farting fighters. So what to buy? One box of Plague Marines will get you everything you need to play a game of Kill Team. And then down the road you might want to pick up a box of Poxwalkers. They can add some fun variety to your lists. And that was all the available Imperium and Chaos Space Marine factions for Kill Team 21. Keep your eyes peeled for Wednesday's video to see the epic conclusion where I talk about the Xenos and Demon factions. These Kill Teams have got me really excited. I've already played Sisters of Battle, Death Guard, Space Marines, and Veteran Guardsmen and they were all super fun. And I feel like after reading all these army lists, Grey Knights and Admech might be in my near future. So what do you guys think? Do any of these teams strike your fancy? Let me know in the comments below. But that's all for this video. I hope you enjoyed and as always, thanks for watching.